Welcome to our study of the book of Philippians, a beautiful four-chapter book that the Apostle Paul has given us, and we are currently looking at the second chapter. I've spent quite a bit of time in chapter 2, verses 1 through 18, and now we're in a different section uh, of the chapter, verse 19. Now, you'll notice in your Bible that oftentimes scriptures are divided by paragraphs. We call those pericopes, pericopes, different sections in the same chapter. Now, remember, I'm sure you know that the Bible did not have chapters and verses when Paul wrote this in Greek uh, back in the first century. In fact, the sentences just kind of ran together, okay? So we later divided them into verses and then into chapters. Okay. So, um, thankfully, someone did that for us many, many years ago. And so, we are now in a different section, as you'll see. We are in verse 19. Let's proceed. I hope in the Lord Jesus, I, Paul, Paul, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Now, we have an introduction of a new person, Timothy. That I, Paul, also may be cheered when I receive news about you. Okay, so Paul has been to Philippi. Timothy is a younger man who is a very strong Christian man who has been discipled by Paul, and he is with Paul. And Paul wants to send Timothy to visit with the Philippian church. Now, as I've said before, if you've been following along with me, Paul is in prison, so he can't leave. And one of the key things about the prison situation, prison situation, is whether or not they are going to kill him or let him go. He doesn't know that yet. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Now, he desires to communicate with the Philippians, and he's going to send Timothy soon. We don't know exactly when, he doesn't know when, but he wants to send him, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. So, obviously what's going to happen is Paul's in prison. He sends Timothy. Timothy spends time with the Philippian people, comes back and reports to Paul what he found out. Now, I know all of you know that this does not take place quickly the time that it takes to get there, the time that Timothy is going to have to spend there, the time that it's going to take for Timothy to get to Philippi, uh, to Philippi, and the time for him to get back to Paul. It's going to take a significant amount of time. So this is a long time frame. I have no one else like him, verse 20. Now, Timothy is an extremely impressive person. He has a very serious relationship with Christ. He is a strong devoter of Christ, devotee of Christ. Paul, uh, in the book of Acts, um, spends uh, quite a bit of time with Timothy. The last letter that Paul writes is to Timothy. Paul is going to die very, very soon thereafter in that last letter to Timothy. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Okay. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. Now, remember the last time I spoke about pastoral care or having a pastoral relationship with your leader, your church leader, wherever you may attend. You want to have a relationship with that person so that they may know you and work with you, love you, care for you, encourage you, pray for you, be there for you, and vice versa, a relationship with them. And so this is very heartwarming to see that Timothy has a genuine interest in the Philippian people. So when he sends Timothy, he honestly does care. Now, one of the most important 
uh, blessings of going to church is being with people that care about you. It would be a terrible thing for you to go to church and you, you don't know the pastor, they don't know you, they don't know who you are, they don't know your name, they don't call you on your birthday, they don't recognize you in any way, they have no clue who you are. Ideally, you want someone that knows your name, knows you personally, knows your family, cares about your welfare, how are you doing, is there anything that you need, how can I pray for you, is there anything that I can do for you? What are your concerns? My door is always open. You're welcome to visit. You're welcome to uh, have me pray for you. I can come and visit you. You know, that kind of thing. Again, we see a pastoral element with Paul in this Philippian letter in the second half of chapter 2. And he's showing how much he cares for other people. My prayer for all of us is that you would find yourself in that positive situation with your leader, your church leader, okay? Verse 21, for everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. I must admit that's pretty true. Many people, most people are looking out for their own interests. Paul wants leaders that look for the interests of Jesus. Now, for those of you that attend a good church, a church that's productive for your family, for yourself, helps you to grow in the faith, leads you in the faith, you're maturing in the faith, I am guessing that your leader is looking out for the interests of Jesus Christ. That this person is not looking out for their own interests. This is very important. So we can have the interest of Christ or our personal interests. Now, those are our two options. What you want is those people that are interested in what Christ wants for the congregation, for the members of the congregation, the congregation as a whole, the interests of each person in the congregation. They are interested in what Christ has for the church, for you. Okay, so you have a corporate element of the church, and then there's this personal element, each member. Now, ideally, if you can put yourself in a situation, by God's grace and mercy, that you have a strong relationship with the church body, and as I've said repeatedly, the pastor of the church, the leader of the church, and that this person genuinely cares about you. So it's the group, and then it's the personal aspect of it. Everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus. You want somebody to look out for the interests of Jesus Christ. What is God saying? So that you have a situation where you have Jesus as the head of the church. You want Jesus, the head of the church, and you want him dispensing his truth and will to the congregation, okay? And what the leader is going to do is take what Jesus is saying, sharing it with the congregation, the congregation responds to that. The congregation responds to that. And collectively, not autocratically, not autocratically, but collectively they are responding together to find out what the will of the Lord is. That is a beautiful situation when you can see that work out. We are listening to Jesus as the head of the church 
and he is dispensing his will and his truth. We are hearing it together. We are praying about it. And then we're moving according to what he says to us. Do not be in a situation where everybody is looking out for their own interests. You're not going to get very far. You're just going to have a lot of disparate points of view. And everybody's just kind of going to be doing their own thing. That's not a good situation. You want to be together, shepherd, sheep, motif. Ezekiel 38, John chapter 10, shepherd, sheep. Sheep follow the shepherd. They're working together. But you know, verse 22, that Timothy has proved himself. Now, leaders need people who have interests in Christ instead of their own personal interests and agenda. And that person must prove themselves. That person must prove that they can be trusted and sent out to share the gospel with the congregation. As Timothy is being sent by Paul to the Philippians and then to return back and to give a report on what he has heard and seen. To give a report of that congregation, if you will that group of people that are in Christ. Timothy has proved himself. You obviously, the leader wants to have people that have proven themselves in Christ so that the leader can trust those people with the truth that Christ shares. Again, that's dispensed across the congregation. The congregation responds in kind. They work together in concert, one step with each other, with Christ as the head. Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. As a son with his father, he has served as a son with his father. Okay, the father is Paul, the son is Timothy. Okay, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. What's the work, people? The work is always the gospel. The gospel. Okay? That's the message that's being shared. That's the message that's being shared. That's the message that we are dispensing to people. We are not dispensing our agenda. We are not dispensing what we want to do and what we think about. We're dispensing what God tells us is the truth. It is coming from Jesus through us, the leader, out to the people. And then back again. And then out to others. That extends the kingdom of God. That's how the kingdom of God works well. If it stays insular, remember I talked last week about complaining and arguing. So if there's a lot of complaining, there's a lot of arguing, there's a lot of infighting, you're not going to get much done for the kingdom of God. That's for sure. That's why Paul says, do everything without complaining and arguing. I need you to shine like stars in the universe. We're in a crooked and depraved generation. I need you to be blameless. I need you to be pure. Work work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay. Now Paul says, I've got a great deal with Timothy. He's proved himself. He has served with me in the work of the gospel. You work with somebody closely in the gospel, you're going to learn a lot. You want to have people in the trenches with you. Can I use that term? You want to have people in the trenches with you you can trust. Because they're firing live ammunition at you folks. You want to have people, you want to have leaders that you can trust. You want to have people in charge that are hearing the gospel. They're going to stand for you. They're going to be concerned about their welfare, your welfare. They're not going to be concerned about their own interests. They're concerned about what Jesus says and what Jesus shares with them, to share with you. Okay. You know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he served me well in the work of the gospel. High praise. Beautiful. Verse 23. I hope, therefore, 
to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. Remember I talked to you about Paul? What's, what, what are your options? Well, first, he could continue to stay in prison. Second, they could let him out of prison and let him go free, which is what they did. Or third, they could kill him, which they did not do, which they did later. That's the Second Timothy r- reference. They finally did kill him, but they did not kill him on this prison sentence, in this prison time, his time in prison. He was let go, and he was jailed again. They killed him in that instance, in that time. So he says, I hope to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I don't know how they're going to go, but I need to find out, and then I will send him to you. Of course, Paul hopes that he will be let go, that he can send Timothy, and that he will get a good report. Verse 24. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Mm Mm-hmm. He wants to come and be with the Philippians. This is a fantastic example of a loving, caring leader, pastor, shepherd, whatever word you want to use, whatever word you're familiar with, in your religious language that you use for church leaders. This is a fabulous depiction of a person that's devoted to Christ, devoted to the people that God has given him, desires to serve them, says, as we saw last time, in order that I might boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. He's very, he wants them to do well. He doesn't want to say, hey guys, man, I did all this work and all this sacrifice. I poured myself out for you and look at what you've produced. You hadn't done very well. Paul didn't want to be able to say that. I want to say, Paul says, that I gave everything I had for your sake and guess what? Y'all did great. You listened You prayed, you thought about what I said, you received Timothy, you received me, you received the message, you learned, you put it into action. You can't ask for more. And look, I hear great things about you. Ministers that lead congregations want to hear great things that their members are doing. They want to hear great things that they're doing in the community. They want to hear great things that they're doing in their lives. They want to hear great things that are going on in their families. They want to hear wonderful things that they're doing with their work, their profession, their daily living. How they are growing in Christ and doing what Christ says. So in this pericope, verses 19 to 24 that we've looked at today, we hear about Timothy in the importance of people. The importance of people in your life the importance of people that make a difference with you in sharing what? The gospel, the work of the gospel. And Paul, just like anyone else, wants to go and visit, wants to go and see them, wants to embrace them, wants to hear good news about them, wants them to do well, cares about them, sitting in prison, still caring and concerned about them. I hope you find yourself in a situation with your church life, your corporate life in Christ, where these things are going on. And if they're not, let's pray that God would grant them and direct and guide you. Lord God, we thank you for your church and we pray for each and every person in our audience that is listening and watching that we may all experience a loving pastor, a loving teacher, a person that listens to the Lord, that knows us and who we are and cares about us as a sheep in their fold. Bless our church leaders, we pray, Lord God. Particularly, I pray for those that are struggling in their church or having a problem finding a church or cannot find a church or not in access. I pray, Lord God, that by your grace and mercy, you will lead us into a situation where we may have a loving and devoted follower of Christ who will lead us to growth and maturity in Christ. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Think about these scriptures that I've shared today. Pray about them. I'll be continuing to pray for you, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.